Okay, Luke, so you've hung up your saddle, you've got rid of your J badge, which we'll talk about later on, and you become a member of the press. Now, I understand you were right in there at the beginning with the racing channel, if people might remember. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was the racing channel, so I, I was in... I, well, I'll tell you now, I, I started off, a lot of people might think, because I'm so yappy and happy-go-lucky, oh, you know, you'll be a natural broadcaster, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't come naturally to me. <laughs> well, some people might say it's still not natural to me, but... You know, it, it didn't come naturally to me, and I and I had to really work at it, um, especially working on flat racing, which I which I hadn't been used to. And they used to have an early morning uh, racing news program. I think it was seven thirty till eight that was on the racing channel and going out on Sky. So I presented that a few times, and George Irvin, who was the main boss at the time, said, "Looky, you're rubbish." He said, "You look like a, um, a rabbit in the headlights. You've got one last chance, and then you're kicked off." Anyway, the night before being professional, I went out in London with a, there was a few of the jockeys were up in London. So I went out and uh, one of the jockeys turned up at the, so then I went home early-ish. And then um, one of the jockeys turned up at the, at the studios because he'd lost his wallet or something. So he still had his black tie on um, and had cuts up down his arm or what have you. And he, he, they let him in. So he was in the, the main gallery. So just as we're going on, so you imagine it, so this is my last chance in broadcasting. George Irvin's there going 10, 9, 8, and all I can hear in the, um, the background is this jockey shout, don't mess it, beep, beep, up, Lukey boy. And so I'm like nervous as hell. Anyway, luckily for me that that half an hour racing news went well and um, the rest, yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been unbelievable how well I've done really. Now, talk about what you've done. You intrigued me a bit earlier with the J badge. Now, you telling me that jockeys have got their sort of tweed clad equivalent of groupies? <laughs> the do seem to be, well, perhaps it was just because I had hair. I don't know what it was, but I definitely seemed to be a bit lucky, luckier with the fairer sex when I had breeches and boots as opposed to cords and a hoodie. But um, yeah, I was, uh, look, it's, it's, it is, it's a wonderful, wonderful lifestyle. It's, Slightly different to being a press man, that is for sure. Now, being a bookmaker's um, video channel, this is 18s and over. You got any particular stories about getting too sordid? Well, <laughs> there, are, there, are, there are a number of, of decent stories. I'll tell, I'll tell you what I will tell you. There's a, there's a particular lady that was, um, we were driving through Hungerford one day. And uh, because I, when I was an amateur, obviously I had no money and Captain Forster didn't believe in, in giving, so I had to clip the horses for any money. So the minute I started getting paid, not only was I getting a wage in the yard, but I was getting a few quid coming in. Anyway, so like anyone would, when you've got a few quid coming in, I went out and bought a, a red XR3i with a Starsky and Hutch style white stripe down the side of it. So we're going through the middle of Hungerford on the way to Wing Canton, and there's this lady coming along the, the, the pavement pushing a push chair and Carl Llewellyn wound the window down and said something not particularly polite to her so we like wound the window up like laughing like giggling kids dr sped off anyway we only went 100 yards down the road before those traffic lights were red anyway this particular woman came up and uh, was banging on the window we were just laughing like giggling kids anyway then oh, my precious car she put her hand in her, her handbag got her keys out and went <laughs> down the side, all down the side of my brand new, my pride and joy. But um, no, that's um, that was quite a funny story. But no, the, the women's side of it. Bearing bear in mind, my my marriage lasted about ten months. <laughs> it hasn't been particularly successful for me. <laughs> yeah, what has been successful has been your broadcasting career. So we now find you on, you know, national TV. ITV racing. I mean, what what are the what do you love about your current lifestyle and job? Well, I, I was lucky. I look as I said, I worked on the racing channel, and then a, another big break, turning point for me was um, I was sitting at an awards do, and the guy next to me was the producer on Radio Five Live, and we said we need someone to do the early morning bulletins. So I agreed to do that, so, which meant I had to leave here at half past three every morning to get there to do a half past five bulletin and then work till nine. And then I used to drive on to the races. Um, it was never gonna, it, it was never gonna last in the sense of, you know, I got to stage one day going to Leicester, I fell asleep at the traffic lights. You know, I, I was just, I was just absolutely exhausted. But, but working for Five Live 
opened my eyes to a, to a wider audience and the fact that you know, racing jargon people just don't understand. So it taught me an awful lot about life and I, I really enjoyed working with Nicky Campbell and I, I realised how limited my vocabulary is and how sharp those real you know, good journalists are. And um, yes, yeah, so I worked for them and then, and then after that, you know, at the races started and I was working for them and then I, I got the, you know, another big break really when, when ITV asked me to become part of the team. So it was, um, I was sat, fair enough, I was down the road, uh, sat in a pub garden having lunch, a couple of beers and then I get a phone call off Richard Willoughby, do you fancy being part of the team? And um, I was obviously absolutely delighted um, they offered me uh, 15 days a year uh, with ITV and then um, we did the practice day and it, it went really well for me and they came back and said we'd like to adjust your contract we'll give you 50 days so that was <laughs> you know, I hadn't even we hadn't even started so yeah and, and it, it was it was brilliant now, the other thing that was nice is that you'd think that the, at the races might be a bit sort of their noses put out of joint but they seemed they seemed genuinely pleased that that you know, Chappers, me, and 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 Weave and Fitzy were working for Trestle Television as well. Yeah, and that's quite good that you didn't have to turn one in to do the other one. No, I mean, at the races or as as sky as it's going to be is has been a massive part of my life. Um, and so yeah, I mean, I, I won't I won't pretend it's you know it it's been easy to dovetail the two, but um, you know I'm a better man when I'm working. I think. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not great when I'm idle. No, you, you're, the, you're known as the happy chap. You're always smiling, you're always joking. And I can vouch that even, you know, it's normal life, you're exactly the same. Uh, but you, do you think you're a bit of an easy target sometimes for people with a chip on their shoulder? And do you think maybe getting at you on social media and stuff is a way of sort of trying to deflect from their own inadequacies? Do you know, I, I, I'm, some, people, some people say this, but don't really mean it. Uh, it doesn't affect me in the slightest. I, I know when I was riding, when I'm broadcasting, I know when I've, 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 I've done a good interview, I've done a, a nice bit of telly, and I know when it's, I've just, it hasn't been, you know. And when you're like me, you're, you're so impromptu. I never plan things. I, I, it's just off the cuff, everything I do. And so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, if people, if people, people are perfectly entitled to their own opinion you know now i noticed some jockeys getting annoyed when they get abuse on on twitter you know if you want to use social media you've got to accept that you're going to get abuse you know there are a certain amount of people that will like you doesn't matter as a person let alone a broadcaster or a jockey and there are a certain amount of people that won't like you so if everyone's entitled to their opinion are there any people on the team that really can't take it oh i don't know there's, there's some people love it and some people but if you want to use social media, you know, I'd, I, I, I can't remember you know, this, this bullying of jockeys. You know, some things, some things, obviously, when they say things about your family, or, you know, that, that, that is awful. And it's above, you know, I would, when, when we're in at the races, Jason Weaver and I laugh when we do our Friday night program. The majority of emails we get are all fun. And could you say hello to so and so in the pub in County Meath or what have you? And, and it's all good. And, and, some, and some really interesting emails as well. And then you get some saying, I, I hope you have a car crash on the way home, or I hope that horse dies, you know, and you're thinking, what sort of person would, but you'd be, you would be amazed how many of those you get. Do you ever feel like uh, reading about and naming and shaming these people? Yeah, we don't, we, I mean, we get one guy that comes on, on Get In programme, literally it's the first email, this is drivel, we hate, I hate this programme, and then, he continues to email throughout the whole night, so he watches four hours of us two giggling like idiots. And um, look, at everyone's entitled opinion, and I, I don't have to agree with it, as long as it doesn't, it doesn't affect me, I promise you. That, people sort of may not think about that, but four hours of live TV, that must be quite difficult, really, to keep it up for, the, for that time. Or do you find that it comes naturally? Keeping too? anything up for four hours is hard. <laughs> no, um, no I don't, look, I, the, that, again, you, you, you've gone through it, so it makes you, it sounds repetitive, but there's always certain flashpoints in everyone's life that, that you see as turning points. You know, I mentioned, you know, to burn a lord and cool ground, and I mentioned uh, Radio 5. Uh, but then the, the next stage was the Get In programme, which 
has started, you know, uh, Rob Dakin and, and, and Paul Cooper, who was the producer then, is now uh, the producer on, on ITV, started that. And it was just, it was just literally me and Jason Weaver sitting there, having a laugh, looking on the bright side. People finish work on a Friday night. You know, the, the, the racing Dundalk and, and Wolverhampton, it's not high class. You get some decent races at Dundalk sometimes, you know, on, on a Friday. But it's not high class. And, you know, you can say, why is that? You're trivialising everything. People have had a long, hard week. They just want to relax. And it's, it was, it's probably the one single programme that has been, you know, I, I, wouldn't have got, I wouldn't have got ITV if it wasn't for that. Um, Jason probably wouldn't have either. So it took us, it took us to a, a different level. Um, yeah, and sometimes it's hard work being a clown for four hours but yeah okay I've been practicing for 52 years but but no it's it's it was it, it's been a it's been a massive help to my career